the thread of conversation around like why they feel so connected to the school always comes back to the work centered in character education. That's what they remember. That's what they, you know, miss. That's what they wish they would have had experiences in on the rest of their educational journey. So, um, you know, sometimes impact is more than just a test score, even though that's also completely amazing. And I think it happens, but um, it's just those long-term effects on, on, on human beings and relationships and connectedness. Prior to doing character education in our school, our academics were average, and but our discipline referrals, we had 338 discipline referrals in one year, and that's at a K to two school, which is quite a few, I felt like anyway. So once we were fully invested, fully implemented in character ed, that year we had 55. That's quite a huge decrease. And we basically measure that as every discipline referral takes a half hour of instruction away from a classroom teacher. So you can imagine the, the impact that that had on instructional practices and on academic achievement. Our academic achievement also went up as well as our attendance. We also, our teacher retention is pretty much 100%. We, we do not have people leave ever except to retire. Character education is different from other um, programs or interventions for, for support in that it's more proactive in learning and it's also community-based. So when you look at other interventions, they're tiered often based upon data that and are reactive in certain in situations, whereas character education kind of helps everyone get on this common ground of how to treat each other, how to make a difference in the world, whether it be in your own backyard or worldwide. So it really teaches students how to act from a set of core values that the community has come together and said, yes, these are important to our community. This is what we need to make sure our children, our families, our staff members all have. And then it follows that up with instruction and modeling by staff members and, and really by parents and community members as well. So, so it really teaches and builds a foundation for behavior. And then when you have other things that pop up that you might need an intervention or there's some social emotional issues, you can draw back to the foundation that you've laid through character education and add on to help, help that. So then you can build your intervention upon a solid foundation. best way that we started kind of shifting this idea of centering character education, you know, in the in, in the work on how we do school is by starting with um, just really getting all the constituents, it's constituents involved and starting by creating three core values that we were going to build everything in our entire environment around. Um, and so those core values are, are very, um, you know, pretty universal. They're pretty simple. Um, those are respect, responsibility, and caring. That's what came out of our, our approach to conversations about what do we really want to be about at the school. Um, but the learning depth and breadth that can come out of just those three words um, is really, it's really almost limitless. I mean, it's pretty amazing what we've been able to roll up as far as procedures and processes and um, just learning opportunities for kids when we center this idea of these core values. This at the foundation of how you do school could really be a change agent. The character education piece is at the foundation of what we're doing. So like one of our graduate aims is, um, you know, appreciative of difference. The other one is, um, you know, academically skilled, um, curious, empowered, and emotionally intelligent. And so these are all things that don't separate academics from character, but rather bridge these things together. Just embrace vulnerability, and just be authentic in the work um, and it, that won't steer you wrong. You'll get great outcomes from that. We handpick the traits that we feel will set our students up the best. Um, some of the main ones like Dr. Frugo touched on, respect is our number one for sure. Um, and then just with our community, like integrity, perseverance, um, gratitude, self-discipline self and things like that. We went back to the drawing board on the approach that we wanted to take and decided to give more of a structure 
um, for our character education rather than just using a set curriculum. So, you know, we pulled from some, from some different things and again, just got together and figured out, you know, what was best for, for our school and community. Um, so that time is, is built into our daily schedule. First thing in the morning, we are doing social emotional learning and our character education. And the teachers have options. One day it may be um, discussion or role playing. They're doing skits, um, examples of respect, you know, or non-examples. The next day it may be journaling, uh, you know, reflection, think, pair, share. So whatever is conducive to, to that classroom, um, the teachers are, you know, using those different options to teach the, the pillars effectively. So one of the things that we really focus on that is different is that intrinsic motivation. And I will tell you, when we did this, I was like, there's no way I have, I have pre K to second grade students. Says, there's no way that they're going to be intrinsically motivated. They're six. They want stuff. And so I was wrong, <laughs> I'm happy to say. And that actually started, we actually started that one day because we had a behavior system. You guys probably know the clip chart where you move up or move down for your behavior. And as kids were getting in the car one day, one of our parents said, what color, were, what color are you on today? Or what color were you? That was the first thing they said as their kid got in the car. And I said, nope, we're done. We are not reducing these six and seven year olds to a color. Every second grader in our building has a leadership role, and it's one of the coolest things that we do. We do something I think Dr. Shirley had talked about his family group. We do that as well. Families, it's cross age groups. So kindergarten, first grade, second graders, everybody has a group that they go to once a month. And that's led by a staff member, a nurse, a teacher, a paraprofessional, even my secretaries lead a group. Our second graders are all in charge of getting either kindergarten or first grade friends to their nest. So they have to go pick up the kids from around the building and get them successfully to a different classroom. And let me tell you, it does take practice. We practice it several times before we do it officially, but they take it very seriously. I'm going to share with you just um, six tips from the other side, uh, six big key pieces that I think uh, were really important for, for my journey and any uh, administrator who is on this journey. So here we go. Number one, this work starts with you. Um, there's a quote by Travis Brad Bradbury that says, the one constant factor in all of your leadership endeavors, either professional or personal, is you understanding yourself is therefore paramount number two you are the champion of this work number three this is a marathon not a sprint number four staff culture matters number five the greatest resource you have in your school is the voices thoughts and the ideas of your students number six is be intentional. I think that people often think that character education doesn't have a place in high school. They think that it seems like more elementary or more middle, you know, middle school in nature. But um, if you are a high school person and you're kind of on the fence about, oh, is this something that we want to take on or will high school kids adapt to this? I can assure you that they 100% will. And when you have your character education and your goals and that tone right in your school, everything else will follow. I, I promise you, everything will follow. Now, one of the, the principles of character ed that we find is at the center of our work is principle four, that the school creates a caring community. First and foremost, I know that um, we were intentional about hiring for character. Um, for us as a school, um, we're super intentional with forming strong relationships with our students. And that's top to bottom from, again, like from the custodial team to um, the administration and so forth. Involving the parents at the beginning of, of the journey was was paramount to our, our success as, as a school of character uh, because they along with the kids and our and our teachers and our and our community helped build the foundation uh, you know 13 15 years ago and continue to to add on to that um, as Kristen said you know you you can't build it all in one day uh, no matter what framework you look at you look at the frameworks and there are so many things in those frameworks and you think, oh my gosh, where am I going to begin? 
start by laying a strong foundation, start by getting your parents and community members involved. Um, because when you have them involved, you have the whole community involved. And that, that's what we found, found to be true. It's okay to go slow to go fast, or it's okay to start small to go big. And when you think about taking on character work, because it, it can go in so many directions and you do become so invigorated by the work that it almost, um, if you let it, it can be so consuming because there's so many great things that you wanna do. And I think that you just have to keep in perspective. Let's do one thing at a time, one foot in front of the other. Let's do, you know, let's start small to go big. There isn't a good time to um, not, you know, to not start the work, just, just start it. Walk with the willing, which goes uh, with Dr. Calcaterra's of start somewhere, start small. Walk with the willing. I don't care if you only have two, two staff members that are buying into this work, just get started. Get together and start doing the work. The work will speak for itself. The work is so incredibly impactful and has great results. Get the word out there. Um, our school had a horrible reputation in the community. And so every little chance I had to get out in front of our community, the great things we were doing and the great things kids were doing, um, you know, social media wasn't as huge as it is now. So obviously using your social media platforms, but I, our local community newspaper, I would send a picture and write a paragraph and I was constantly sending it to it and say, if you have a blank space and you just need to have it filled, can you please put this picture and paragraph about our school in there? And they would want to fill their spaces. And so just constantly getting the great things that you are doing out there in character ed, it catches on. I mean, this is good work. It, it's powerful work. It's impactful. It changes lives. It changes uh, cultures and climates. And so um, you, ju you just got to start, walk with the willing, get it out there. So what's the advice that, that I would give to other leaders around implementing character education? I think truly it is just to do it. You can't do it wrong. If you come at it with a servant's heart for your staff and your students, and your goal is to truly help make your students better people, better citizens, so that they can in turn impact the world in a positive way, you can't mess that up. Be intentional about it. Be really, really intentional about, you know, the impact and, and the goals that you have for your school and community. And um, make it as genuine as possible. I know, like, from a personal standpoint, um, it's relatable, a lot of the things that these, these students are going through. So I can put myself, you know, in their shoes, even, you know, even if it's brand new to you, a lot of things the, these kids are going through, put yourself in their shoes and in, uh, in the shoes of the community. And, you know, what are the real needs and necessities for them? And how can we, you know, make those long-term impacts um, and just do it from, from a genuine place. So I think doing that, I mean, that, that's half the battle, at least it has been with us because I don't think it was anything that was that has been forced. We've just, you know, like like uh, Dr. Funston said, just do it. You got you got to do it. It's you know it's necessary for for the kids in the community. Are you making the time and the space for this work to be done? Making sure that the expectations are clear for everyone. Everyone in the building has the same language. Even with high school kids, you can't assume that they know what to do, and we do that a lot with kids. It's, it's that intentional focus on giving them exactly what you expect from them and want them, want them to show you. Everybody that is involved in the school system has a part in, in this happening in your school. Your, the bus drivers are so important, the custodians, everyone who a child comes in contact with has a part. And so how are we empowering bus drivers? Are we training them in, in character education? Are we empowering them to make their bus their classroom and the importance that they're the first and last uh, uh, person, adult person that a child sees um, most days? Invest in your people. Posters are fine. Those fall down. <laughs> people, you know, definitions, putting that up on the wall, that's great. I think we have to be very clear about you know, what something means, but it's really the true investment in professional development and growth in your people. Make it a priority in your hiring. Um, 
understand what your vision is for your character education work with your kids and then hire educators who are character educators. Uh, you know, you can be the best reading teacher in the world, but if you can't relate to students and build relationships, it, it's not going to go well for you. So, you know, we focus a whole lot on making sure that when we hire someone, they understand and can talk about the need to be an educator for character first, and then we'll put in the math and the reading. I, 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 can, I can teach teachers how to teach math or how to teach reading. I can't necessarily teach them how to care about and love kids and love each other. And so we start by making sure that, that they have that in place before we, before we bring them into our building.